for an experience that you won't ever forget. It is the Keeper Experience. God bless you. God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. How many are ready to worship and praise the Lord today? God's been good to you. Amen. God bless you. We are grateful that you decided to worship with us on this Sunday morning. Uh, we are grateful for all of our parking lot praisers that's joining us out there. All of our parking lot praisers. Let's show them some love today. And everyone joining us online. Well, I know like you can say, like I can say this morning, like, like I can say this morning, that the joy of the Lord is your strength. How many can say that the joy of the Lord is your strength? We say it all the time from scripture. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We've come here to hear from God today, to praise him and worship his name. And we know that praise precedes the victory. That's to say we say it all the time when the praises go up. The blessings are going to come down, and I believe that God has some blessings for you that are here today, everyone in our parking lot, and everybody viewing online. There's a scripture that I love that's found in 1 Corinthians. It says this, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's a powerful decision for you to make in your life, to be steadfast, immovable. That is to say that I won't let my circumstances move me. I won't let my difficulties move me in life. I won't let life just steal my joy. But, but I'm going to stay with God. And we know that, you know, when we look out, we see the natural. We see things that are happening in the natural. There may be some things in your life that you're dealing with that are the natural. But I am grateful to God that we serve a supernatural God. How many of you know that we serve a supernatural God? And I believe that God is getting ready to do some supernatural things in your life. Miracles are on the way and you're getting ready to step into a season of miracles. How many of you believe that this morning? Well, amen. Our praise team is getting ready to lead us today. Let's give a shout out one more time. Shout for joy if you're happy to be in the house of God. Give them praise all in the parking lot, all at home. Come on, praise team. Let's praise this name this morning.
store all the things that I've been through you can feel my pain what I've had to go through to get here you'll never understand my prayer don't try to figure it out because my worship my worship is for real oh
partnership with Love Incorporated. We also are supporting Rahab Ministries in helping women who have been victims of human trafficking. They are now providing housing and support for these women. We are collecting hair products to stock at their housing unit. More information can be found in the foyer. The Power of Prayer. Bring your prayer request to church starting Sunday, October 31st. This will be the start of our 40 days of Finishing Strong prayer movement. Join the entire church in special prayer starting the first week of November. Kingdom Kids and our student ministries start in November. At our 11 a.m. services, we will release them for a great experience of activities and growth in the Word of God. We are searching for vaccinated volunteers to support. Call the church for more info. Registration can be found in the foyer. Join us in sending gifts to children in need across the world. Operation Christmas Child is back. Each year, children are blessed because the people of Mount Zion take time to give to a child and make them smile during Christmas. Grab your box and instructions in the foyer as the deadline is November 28th. Help us make a difference this Thanksgiving season. We are asking everyone to bring in canned goods, non-perishable sides, turkeys, and hams. There will be a drop-off barrel in the foyer. Also, recommend a family who needs a full meal this season. Have them call the church and come to our food pantry to receive a meal for families up to six people. This Thanksgiving season, invite at least one person who hasn't come to church this year on Sunday, November 21st. This is our special service where we make it an emphasis to thank God for his provision over this entire year. Then don't forget to tune in online for our Thanksgiving online praise and worship program on Thursday, November 25th at 10 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook. The last quarter of the year, we ask every member, follower, and partner of the Mount Zion Ministry to give a special donation. This year's campaign is the 321 Legacy Offering. When you plant the right seed into God's house at the end of the year, it will bring blessings, opportunities, and divine protection for the new year. We like to connect our giving to projects. However, the most important reason for our giving should be about being a good steward of what God has given us. Of course, you can give a bigger gift. However, we are asking everyone to give $300, $200, or $100 above and beyond their regular giving. Write Legacy on your regular offering envelope or submit by mail, Mount Zion app, Givelify, or our text to give platform. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. Would you stand with me and stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Do we have any blessed people in the house? Just say amen. Amen. It's so good to see you here today. We are blessed to be able to be here for yet another Sunday. If you're in the parking lot, even if you're online, we're so happy that you joined in with us and that we're here during this special time. As the choir is saying, I've been through too much not to say thank you, Lord. Is there anybody here that can just say thank you, Lord? Amen, amen. We're going to read from our text. If you have your Bibles again, we've turned to Malachi 3, 6 through 12, and we're going to read that responsibly. The Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it.
Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God today. Thanking God for all of the resources that he's given us today. Focus on the good things that God has given you today. Today is a great time as we give to God to say, thank you, Lord, for all of the resources that I have. Thank you, Lord, for all of the things that I may have overlooked during the week. Thank you, Lord for blessing me today. You know, as we give in today's tithe and in today's offering, we commit ourselves to the Word of God. That's what we're doing when we participate in this part of worship. We're committing ourselves to the Word of God. We're seeking to obey His Word, and what we're doing is we're putting it into practice. We're excusing our, our, ourselves from trying to just reason things and try to lean on our own thoughts and our own desires and our own arguments by thinking on the things of God. And see, when you can think on the things of God, when you can think on the level that God wants you to think, that's when God can use you in a mighty and powerful way. See, that's what you want. Somebody wants God to use them. Anybody want God to use you, just say amen. God wants to use you. He wants to use you as, a, as, a, as an example of what God can do. As the text says, he wants to give you more. He wants to open up more doors for your life. And he just wants to ask you and challenge you right now. Will you allow me to use you? Will you allow me to be Lord and leader over your life? And when you say yes to his word, when you follow his command, I want to tell you, he'll make your path straight. And he'll bless you immeasurably. He'll bless you with more blessings than you can handle. How many of you want more blessings than you can handle? Somebody just give God a hand clap of praise. I don't know about you, but it's greater if God gives you so much that you got to reject some of it. And you got to say, no, I can't take it anymore. Let's just bow our heads and talk to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for tithe. We thank you for offering. God, the great thing about what you've done, Father, is you've made it a great equalizer. We give according to what you've given us. And that's a personal issue within our heart. And so as we give back to you, you just ask for the tenth, at least the tenth that we give back to you of what you've already given to us. But we know that when we don't keep things to ourselves and we give it back to you and bless your house, you'll bless our house. So we do this, God, knowing and believing that your word is true. We give you all the praise and honor today, and we ask that you would bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask those that are giving a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets, and you can also pick up your communion. If you're online, go to mzov.org or Givelify. If you're in your car, the ushers are coming forward also with communion and tithes. We are blessed in the city today as we give. Amen. Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. bless. bless.
let the church say amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's house as we prepare ourselves for our communion time. I'm going to ask if our pastoral staff, will they come forward and stand here in the front as we prepare ourselves for communion time. And I would ask if you would just bow your heads as we talk to God in a moment of meditation and a moment of reverence before we partake. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, starting in 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord, which also I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying that this cup, is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Will you bow your heads and thank God for yet another opportunity to be in a communion service. This is the 11th communion service of the year and somebody ought to say thank you. Thank you, God, for bringing me all along this journey. One of the things that we should do when we are going about this journey of communion is we should look back. Right now is a great time to look back of what was done on the cross. We remember we ought to look back on what Christ accomplished for us by dying on the cross for our sins, by being rose from the grave on the third day. What he was showing you is that he loves you. I want to tell you today, if nobody else loves you, remember this morning that God loves you. If nobody shows love to you when you leave the doors today, remember you were in communion service and you were reminded that God loves you. Isn't it good to know that God loves you? And because he loves you, he made a way for you to even be here today. He made a way, even if you're watching us online, for you to be able to watch us right now. He made a way, if you're in the parking lot, for you to be able to drive here safely. If it had not been for the way that God made in your life, you wouldn't be here on today. So we look back on the sacrifice that was made. Then another thing I want you to do as we partake in communion today is I want you to look ahead. The great thing about our communion is we can look ahead. Jesus came a long time ago as a suffering servant but the truth of the matter is in the future he's going to come back as a conquering king and you know what that means when the conquering king comes that what you see today won't be your portion always what you're experiencing right now won't be your portion always but another thing that we ought to do every time we have communion is to look inside the bible teaches that we ought to examine ourselves. What does that mean? This is the time to just look over your week, look over your year and say, are there some things that I need to fix? Are there some things that I need to turn away from? Are there some things that I need to ask for forgiveness for? This is a great time to bow our heads and just say, Lord, will you forgive me? Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my past transgressions. Forgive me of the things that I did wrong. Lord, wash me whiter than snow. This is a great time to recommit yourself to the Lord, to say, Lord, I may not have been going to church like I should. I may not have been reading my Bible. I may not have been praying and speaking to you like I should have. This is a time where I'm going to recommit my life to you. I'm going to recommit my life to my family, to, to my church, to my friends, to the people that love me the most. Maybe this is a great time for you to recommit yourself to the Lord right now. So take a quick moment to just recommit yourself, to, to look inside and to just clean those things out. We believe that when we, when we repent, when we talk to God and ask him to, to clean us and give us a clean slate, when we walk out here today, we don't have to walk out with fear. We don't have to walk out with worry. We don't have to worry about a thing because he will wash you whiter than snow. And also I speak to those, if you're here in the audience or if you're online or in the parking lot, if you haven't said yes to Jesus, this is a great time to say yes to the Lord, to say, yes, I want you to be leader and Lord over my life. Yes, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Yes, I believe that you rose from the grave on the third day. And so I want you to come into my heart. I want you to reside in me. The Bible says, if, if, if you abide in him, he'll abide in you. 
And so that's what we want today. We want him to abide in us. And if this is the first time that you asked him to abide in you or you asked him to be leader of your life, we want you to let us know about it. Go to the website. There's a place where you can let us know. You can also get the card that's in the pew or in the foyer and just let us know. In your bulletin, you can just separate that piece and turn it in right at the receptacle at the door and let us know that you want to commit yourself to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the Bible says, as we just read, that he took the bread and he said, this is a testament of my body that was broken for you. He said, as often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Then the Bible says he took the fruit of the vine. And he said, also, when you drink this, the fruit of the vine, he said, this is a testament of my blood that was shed for you. And so as often as you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for making a way. We thank you, God, that we can participate today. We thank you, God, that we can look back, that we can look forward, and that we can also look within. We ask today that you would bless your people as we have partake right now in communion. Thank you for the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Can you say amen? Amen, amen. If you got a hand free, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen, amen. Our staff may be seated at this time. Before we go into the word of God, I want to invite all of our children and all of our youth. Our children are going to come to the front, to the left, and our youth, our middle schoolers and our high schoolers, you're going to go to my right, which is to your left, and you're going to go out the front doors to your left, and our children, you're going to go out to the front doors on your right. Can we give our children and youth a great big hand clap? Amen. That's kindergarten through fifth. It's going to go over to our restoration center on the other side. And in our educational wing, we're going to have our middle schoolers and our high schoolers. Give our teachers a great big hand clap also. Amen for blessing us. We know it's important for all of our student ministries to convene. If they can go to school, we believe they should be able to participate in church. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. So we know we're going to do it safely and we're going to, again, Give them the word of God and bless them and help them to create the relationships that they need here at Mount Zion. Amen, amen. If you have your Bible, can you turn your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 9? If you have a Bible with you, say amen. If you don't have a Bible, say help me Jesus. That's good. I only heard a couple of you. It's okay. If you got a phone, you got a Bible in your phone. As long as you got the word somewhere, that's all I'm concerned about. Or you can access it quickly. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. Which is the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 9, and I'm going to just read a portion of it. Matthew chapter 9, <clears throat> verse 29. Will you stand for about 10 seconds? We're just going to read it together. Will you just stand with me for a moment and just repeat after me these words as we stand at the attention of God as we read his word. The Bible says this. Repeat after me. Say, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. Can you say it one more time? Say, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. Amen. You may be seated in God's house. Heavenly Father, we thank you again. We're praying to you. Thanking you, God, for this moment to preach and teach your word. Hide me behind your cross as I speak your word. Help somebody in this place to receive a word from you. Thank you, God, for another opportunity, God, to hear your voice through the preached word and also to hear your voice through this marvelous service. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Before I begin today, I'd like to tell a story. The story, what they call of about the story of the frogs. The story of the frogs. There was a bunch of frogs who were arranged to be in a running competition. And so the goal of this uh, 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 competition was to reach the top of a very high tower. 
So a big crowd had basically gathered around the tower to see if these uh, uh, frogs would be able to climb up this tower after running to the tower. And so they were there to, to cheer on the frogs and, and cheer on these contestants. And so the race began. The race began. All of these frogs began to run forward and get ready to jump up this tower. And, and honestly, no one in the crowd really believed that the tiny frogs would reach the top of the tower. The observer shouted out statements such as, this is way too difficult and, and they will never make it to the top. And the observer says there was no chance that you would succeed. And they were saying that the tower was way too high. It's impossible for any of you frogs to make it up that tower. Sure enough, the tiny frogs, as they began to try to jump up that tower, began collapsing one by one except for some of the frogs who in a fresh temple and a spurt of energy were climbing higher and higher. So the crowd, they continued to yell, it's too difficult, you can't do it, you can't make it, you'll never make it up the tower. And, and many of the tiny frogs got tired and began to give up. You know, most of the crowd believed that they couldn't make it, and most of them were probably right. It was impossible for the frogs to jump up on the tower. But, but one little frog continued higher and higher and refused to give up. And at the end of the race, all of the frogs had given up climbing the tower except for this one tiny frog. And after this big effort, it was the only frog that reached the top. Of course, all of the other tiny frogs wanted to know how this one frog managed to do it. How did this frog manage to get up the tower? They asked the tiny frog, how did you succeed and, and find the strength to reach the goal? And the tiny frog explained basically with gestures and a smile on his face that he was deaf. He thought the crowd. He thought that the crowd had been, had been encouraging, him, encouraging him the whole time. But the truth of the matter is, the little frog couldn't hear a thing. And you know, sometimes we've got to be like that deaf frog. Don't let the negative things around you or what you hear shake your faith. Today I just want to take a quick moment to teach and preach from the subject of faith is the only way you'll make it. Faith, say faith is the only way you'll make it. You know, one of my newest and favorite verses in the Bible is, comes from Matthew 9, 29. To me, it speaks to what I would like to call the law of expectation. It speaks to the law of expectation. The question of the matter is, can you put faith in front of you? Can you, uh, in essence, faith it till you make it when bad news comes your way? Can you, in essence, faith it till you make it when you've lost something or someone dear to your life is gone? Can you faith it till you make it when the doctor says that good health is not going to be on your chart? Can you faith it to till you make it when life happens? When, when, when I recite this verse, uh, the question comes to mind, what should I expect from the Lord on today? Better yet, what are you expecting God to do in your life? The truth of the matter is, this is the great time of year to where we can do what? We can activate the law of expectancy. Here in the text, Jesus is basically in the context of this story. He's healing a blind man. And he's saying to this blind man, to this man, he said, you can choose your outcome. You have the power over your destiny. I don't know who I'm talking to, but, but you've got to faith it till you make it. You know, you actually have a say in, in the possible outcomes in your future. The Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. See, I think expectancy and faith are very important concepts to look at because when you go further into the scripture, you'll see this. If you write down notes in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So faith is the only way. That's the angle that he wants us to do things from. You've got to live your life through a lens of faith. What is faith? Faith is saying, yes, God, I believe that things are going to get better. What is faith? Faith is saying, yes, God, I believe that you're going to heal my body. What is faith? Faith is saying, I believe, God, that you're going to turn it around. Is there anybody in this place that's a witness of God turning it around in your life? Somebody needs to hear this. Yes, God. I believe that you're going to make things better on my job. Yes, God, I believe that even though I see trouble, that I believe that you can be my peace in the midst of a troubled storm. 
Yes, God, I, I, I am going to walk this thing by faith expecting your miracle working power. See, somebody might, may be asking the question, why is faith so important? Why is faith such a big thing? Well, it's important because in Romans 14, the word of God says, whatever is not of faith is sin. Now, that's scary. I don't, I don't, I don't want this. I don't, I don't want to be in sin, per se. So, so how do I have more faith? Especially if the Bible says faith pleases God. If it pleases God, I need more of it. If it pleases God, that's something I need to do. Uh, if faith is what makes my life more rewarding and more fulfilling, then how do I build my faith? And so that's the question for today. How do you build your faith? How do you live a life of faith? Well, unfortunately, I'm sorry to deliver you this bad news, but there's no vitamins that you can take. There's no, there's no uh, therapy available per se. There's no seminar. There's no YouTube video that will give you faith. No, let me be real with you right now. And even if you're online, is, and then we're done for the day. Faith is built by exercising it. Faith is built by doing something and, and simply by making the right responses to the situations that we encounter in our lives. See, the truth of the matter is life is actually set up to exercise your faith. Life is set up the exercise of faith. And I know there's some people who have been on the journey for a while and can agree with me. And if you're here today, life has tested you many, many times. There's some folk in this building when life has thrown you some curveballs. Yes, it's hard to make the right decisions. Yes, it's hard to trust. Yes, it's hard to believe in things that you can't see and feel or, or really don't know in your life. But, but if you want to succeed in life, you've got to have faith. Yes, faith is the substance of things hoped for and it's the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith is like a muscle and when it's stretched and pulled, it develops and it does what? It gets stronger. Think about it. James chapter 1 verse 3 says this. The testing of your faith develops what? Perseverance. So that you may be what? Mature and you may be complete. James chapter 1 verse 3. The testing of your faith develops perseverance. So that you may be mature and complete. And so I'm here to tell you on today. That what you are going through could be a test in order to help you get stronger. As the Bible says to make you a more complete Christian. See, the truth is, God is testing us every moment of our lives. Life is a big test. I don't know about you, but I've been tested even this past week. Anybody ever been through a test? Just wink at me right now. Anybody been through a test? Just say amen. amen. We've all been through tests. So at the end of the day, we are surrounded by tests. But here's a tip. We shouldn't look at the test of life. We shouldn't look at life as if it's just a bunch of problems. But we should look at them as faith building opportunities faith building opportunities what you go through is a faith building opportunity yes I lost this but this is an opportunity to have faith in this era yes they treated me this way but this is an opportunity for, for me to have faith that I'm going to be okay somebody needs to know that you're going to be okay Yes, this is what I see, but this is an opportunity to build my faith in what God can do to turn this thing around. I've seen people healed. I've seen situations turn around, but it starts with your faith. Are there any healed people in the place? Give God some praise. If God healed you, it started with your faith. So God wants us to have strong faith. Say strong faith. And so he will test us in many different areas. And there's two areas that I want to hit on today that I believe God tests us the most, most in. Is that God will test you through, number one, difficulties. And number two, God will test you in your finances. He'll test you through difficulties and he'll test you through your finances. Now, sometimes God is testing you when you get into debt. Sometimes God is testing you when you get out of debt. Sometimes God is testing you when you get some type of bonus, if you will. Oftentimes, God will test you when you're going through some financial problems. Oftentimes, we're being tested when we're asked to be givers. See, all of this is a matter of faith. See, the Bible says in the New Living Translation, in Luke 16, 11, Jesus says, he says, if I can't trust you with worldly wealth, with dollars and cents, who will trust you with true riches? Now, what is Jesus talking about there? 
He's trying to tell us that there's a definite direct relationship between how you handle your money and the spiritual depth of your life. He's saying there's a direct connection. In fact, Jesus said, if you aren't faithful in handling material wealth, how will I trust you with spiritual wealth? If we aren't faithful with our possessions, then the Bible is teaching he will not trust us with spiritual power. Our pocketbook is a test. Our checkbook can tell us how we're doing in our life. The fact that, of the matter is, is that what we do with our money will determine how much God can bless your life. It, it's, it has a huge impact. I've learned in over 40 years of my journey from a young boy to a man is how God determines how much he can bless your life by how faithful you are as a giver. It's a test of faith. He knows what we go through in our minds. I could do this. I could do that. But when we choose to do things God's way, you will see better growth and better gains in your life. See, every time you give to God, your faith does what? It grows. Every time you give, not only to the church, but, but every time that you give to others, it breaks the, the grip of materialism in your life. Every time you give, you grow in love. Every time you give, you grow in faith. Every time you give, you grow in hope. Every time you give, you grow in spiritual maturity. David pointed this out in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. He said that all he had was God's anyway. The truth of the matter is all we have and all will ever be is because the God that was on our side. You have what you have because God gave it to you. How many know that it all comes from the Lord? Can we give God some praise? There's got to be some folk that are blessed here today that can give God some praise that what you have, what you have been given is not by your own power, but by the power that God gave to you. And he's worthy of your praise and your adoration today. And so David in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, he acknowledged that his resources came from the Lord. And he knew it was a test of his faith in God. It was a test of also his love for God. It was a test of what the condition as we talk about. It's a heart condition. It was a test of David's condition of his heart. Also, the book of Malachi teaches us in the Bible. It takes us even further and goes beyond uh, 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 teaching us that our giving not only tests us, or us being great givers, it not only tests us, but it also tests God. That's the great thing. Test God. And it says to God, can you do what you said you would do? And God will answer this. And I know this personally. When you give, God will say this. See if I won't provide for you. See if I won't bless your life. See if I won't protect you. See if I won't provide a way through. Has God made a way through for you? Somebody ought to give him some praise. See if I won't provide a way through or a way out in your life. The truth of the matter is, God actually makes an uneven exchange with us. Think about it. It works out better in our favor if you participate. He says this. He says, you give to me and I'll give to you and see who wins. I love that. You give to me and I give to you and I want you to test me and see what I won't do in your life. Your faith will bring you things that money can't buy. Your faith in God will give you some things that your credit card can't get you. I want to tell you this. Your money can buy medicine, but your money can't buy you some good health. Your money can buy you a house, but your money can't buy you a home. Your money can buy you companionship, but your money won't buy you true friends. Your money can buy entertainment, but your money won't buy you true happiness. Your money can buy food, but your money won't buy your appetite. Your money can buy you a good life, but your money cannot buy you eternal life. And so that's why we've got to walk by faith and give God what he deserves because the things we really need in life come from the Lord. So often our faith is tested with our finances. However, here's another one. Our faith is also tested through difficulties. Is there anybody in this place going through some difficulty? Sometimes God will send us through the furnace of affliction. The Bible loves to talk about how we are, in essence, sent through the fires. Anybody going through some fires? 
Somebody said, let it burn. Let it burn. Let's get it over with. But fires, the furnace of affliction is only to do a few things. It is to refine us. It is to shape us. It is to mold us. And it is to make us better. It is to get the impurities out. For instance, when you look at a goldsmith and if you ask them, how do you make beautiful jewelry? If you go to a jeweler or go to someone who works with gold or silver, how do you make this jewelry so beautiful? He will tell you that you have to burn the impurities away. And if you ask the jeweler, how do you know when the uh, impurities are gone from the gold and silver? He will tell you that the way you know that you got them out is you can see your reflection in it. See, when God sees his reflection in you, that's when he knows that he's got the impurity out of your life. And that's when you'll pass the test. See, as you go through the test of life, the Bible says, consider it pure joy. Somebody say joy. See, that's what faithing it is all about. Having joy in the midst of it all. James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 says, Consider it pure joy whenever you go through trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith will develop what? Perseverance. Now what does that mean? Consider it pure joy. James is saying basically when you've got a problem, you've got to relax. In fact, he says, rejoice, take it easy, thank God, and praise God. Now, now, why in the world would I praise God? Why in the world would I have joy? How can we do that? Because, because it is in those times where we can't lean on what we see. We got to lean on what we know. We know that God is with us. We know that God has a plan for us. We know that God has a purpose for our life. We know that God is going to help us through it. We know that if he got you this far, it's evidence that he didn't bring you here to leave you. We can still have joy. We can still be thanking God. Now, we aren't necess necessarily thankful for the problem. We're not thankful for the problem all the way, right? We are thankful in the problem. We're not to just be thankful for the problem. We are to be thankful in the problem. That's a big, there's a big difference there. He basically says, don't stop being who you're supposed to be just because of what you're going through. Because there is one certainty in life, and that is that trouble won't last always. Now, I don't know if somebody heard me. There's one certainty in life is that trouble don't last always. I want to proclaim to you, this is not going to be your situation forever. So God will test our faith through what we call difficulties. But the good thing about God is that if you have faith, God will supply your needs. He'll supply your needs. I want to tell you today, he'll supply your needs. For instance, in the Old Testament, we look at the children of Israel. We look at the people of Israel. The people of Israel were traveling to a land that he had promised them. If you look back in the Old Testament, yet they were growing weary. They were getting tired because the people ran out of food. They ran out of provision. And instead of supplying them a storage of food, he fed them what the Bible says. He fed them manna. He fed them a bread-like substance that fell from the sky each and every morning. So they had to get out each and every morning to gather enough just to eat for the day. God only gave them enough for each day. Now I'm sure these people, they wanted to ask, why can't I gather enough for the week? Why can't I gather enough for the month? Why don't you hook me up for the whole year? I know they felt that way. What if I was sick and I can't go out there and gather for tomorrow? This doesn't make any sense to me. But, but see, that's what having faith is all about. It's about not worrying about tomorrow, but thanking God for his daily bread. Is there anybody in this place that can thank God for blessing you on today? Is there anybody in this place that knows that if you got a roof over your head you ought to thank him for your daily bread if you've got food on your table you ought to thank him for your daily bread if you've got clothing on your back you ought to thank him for your daily bread if you've got your health somebody ought to say hallelujah if you've got a reasonable portion of health and strength somebody ought to give God some praise somebody ought to shout out with a voice of triumph because you can walk this thing day by day with faith. Is there anybody who can faith it until you make it today? Will you have some faith? Come on, give them some praise right now. Will you have some faith? Faith, faith. Somebody
Somebody say faith. 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 Come on, give us some praise. Let's pray. Stand on your feet right now. Somebody said, I prayed about it, but it hasn't come yet. I wanted it to happen. I feel like I'm walking by faith, but I don't see it coming to existence. I want you to talk to God and just say, God, I still have faith. I want you to keep the faith because I want you to know that if he gave it to you right away, how would you know that he's really there? How would you know that he's going to come? And the truth is, he may not come when you want it, but I want to tell you, God always comes on time. Come on, come on, give him some praise if you believe it. He may not come when you want him. But he's always, he's always right on time. Will you bow your head right now? I want to speak to you who may have been struggling with faith. God says that he acts on the behalf of those who wait for him. Maybe you're waiting. I want to proclaim to you that while you're waiting, God is working. I want to proclaim to you that you can faith it until you make it. He wants to see when you walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes we worry, we wander. Is God going to show up? I want you to look back. Look back over your life. And you'll see all the times that your faith has brought you through. You'll see all the times that God brought you from a mighty long way. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to give him some praise right now. I'm bowing my head. I'm thinking on God. I'm thinking about this virus. I'm thinking about the pandemic and everybody that's here today everybody that hears my voice everybody in the parking lot God has delivered you and he's brought you thus far he's given you daily bread and for that we ought to just say thank you Lord amidst all the challenges we see in our country we can say thank you Lord amidst all the challenges that we see in our city and our world we're still standing here today and so I ask you and I challenge you today will you faith it will you faith it till you make it I want to offer Christ, as I spoke earlier, if there's somebody here, whether you're in the building, whether you're online, whether you're in the parking lot, remember to say yes to Jesus. We want to connect with you. There's a card in the pew or out in the foyer, or we want you to go online. Tell us about it. Tell us about your story. Take that bulletin. Write some information down. If you need special prayer, we want to be here for you. That's what this assembly is all about. It's about being here for each other. It's about feeling the presence of the Lord in this place. Every week, we gather so that we can keep our spirits up, so that we can keep our joy in the Lord up, so that we can see other believers. Somebody may be next to you with their head hung low, and all you got to do is give them a smile and say, everything is going to be all right. Is there anybody in this place that believes that everything is going to be all right? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Encourage somebody. Everything is going to be all right. Will you pray before we go? Bow your heads in prayer. There's been some crazy things going on in our world. I want you to pray for those that are in Houston. We saw at that concert craziness going on. Young people killed, trampled, just going to a concert. Think about your loved one going away, just saying, I'm going to a concert to never come home. Pray for those parents. Pray for those grandparents that are involved in that tragedy. Pray for our city. Pray for our schools in our area. Pray for our new elected officials. They're going to be faced with some major challenges. Continue to pray for our church. We're thankful that we're going into 40 days of prayer. We started by praying for our senior pastor and the first family and praying for the leadership of this church. We need you. We need your prayers, and we want you to continue to pray. We feel your prayers. We've been able to be stable and to be able to do great things because of praying people. The Bible says when two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst of it. God is in the midst of what we're doing here at Mount Zion. It all starts with great prayer. It all starts with believers coming together saying, God, I believe and I know that you can do it today. Pray for those on our sick and shut-in list. We're praying for those that have passed on. Also, Sister Rushi Dennis, great member of our church. We're going to funeralize her on Tuesday. Sunday, Hunt's mother. We're praying for her member of the choir and praise team we're praying for her over the loss of her mother will you pray right now will you pray right now for those things that I just spoke will you pray right now even from your cars even online no matter what time you view this begin to pray for us please even on right now Heavenly Father we thank you we love you we lift you up we praise your name we magnify you God you are the living word 
Thank you, God, that we can walk by faith and not by sight. And while we're walking, God, we believe that you're still working it out. We pray for miracle working power right now. We pray for answered prayer. We stand and believe that whatever your people are going through, that you can turn it around in an instant. So, Father, we choose today to walk by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise today. And consider yourselves dismissed. We'll see you on next week. Amen. Our God is big.